who is uh, currently the president of the uh, American Japan Society. He is uh, a diplomat with a very stellar career, I would say. Uh, he has served as ambassador to the United States, ambassador to the United Nations and to the WTO in Geneva, um, chairman of the executive committee of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, and also has worked in Jakarta, Paris, and London, as well as being a Deputy Director General for Asian Affairs in the Foreign Ministry and Director General for North American Affairs. Uh, so he is uh, extremely well qualified to speak to us today on the changing Asia Pacific, uh, a Japanese view, of course. Uh, we have all been focused, I think, uh, very much on the Asia-Pacific in recent weeks. Uh, we have been looking at what's going on there with a certain amount of trepidation, uh, with a new American president uh, who, um, to say the least, has not indicated a consistent line in dealing with the problems of uh, the Asia-Pacific. And uh, what is even perhaps more worrying, uh, a leader of North Korea uh, who is, if anything, even more unpredictable. Um, the area is one that brings uh, in the interests of many other countries, uh, China, uh, Russia, um, as well as the United States, and uh, Japan, of course, uh, which is uh, the um, country that provides a, a base for more American troops than I think any other country in the region or perhaps even in the world. Um, and then we have uh, elections uh, unforeseen or uh, in South Korea for a new president. Uh, we have deployments um, on South Korean soil uh, we have armadas which are said to be going in one direction and then another. So we have all become very alive to the general uh, preoccupation uh, that's called for in relation to the area. I'm sure that, uh, Ambassador Fujisaki, you will be able to enlighten us very much uh, given your privileged and close uh, perspective on these matters. Thank you very much uh, for uh, giving me uh, this opportunity. Dear Eid, how many people understood? That's not Japanese. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I uh, stepped down from diplomacy uh, more than four years ago. And uh, I was ambassador to Washington, D.C., and uh, that was not so easy job, very delicate. So uh, on that day, I said to my wife, now I can say anything. <laughs> my wife said, no one cares anymore. <laughs> so uh, I'm very honored to be here today. That you're, and uh, this is uh, my first time in uh, Dublin, first time in Ireland. And uh, I asked my friend, uh, what uh, uh, should I be careful about? And uh, uh, he said, uh, just choose the right color tie. So uh, that's why I'm wearing this. And uh, he also said, uh, we Japanese and uh, Irish uh, love our land. That's the commonality. Uh, land, L stands for literature. We. Uh, many of us have uh, been uh, following James Joyce and things like the, the uh, uh, Irish literature. So uh, uh, I knew Westmoreland Street, uh, Dame Street, uh, St. Stephen's Green, and all that. Uh, just by, <laughs> I've never been there, but I've known that. And uh, N stands for nature, uh, beautiful Irish nature, and Japan's. Our cities are not that nice, but uh, nature is nice. Uh, D, 
decency. I think uh, Irish people and Japanese people share decency because uh, we are surrounded by bigger neighbors. I don't name uh, those countries' names because I was a diplomat, uh, but uh, it's a, we have gone through very delicate times. And uh, I forgot A. A is, uh, of course, we share love of alcohol. <laughs> uh, you have uh, Irish uh, whiskey, Irish beer, pub, and uh, we have sake. And so uh, I think uh, we have some commonalities here. And uh, it's very great that uh, we have uh, enjoying the six years commemoration of uh, our diplomatic uh, relations. Now, I'm talking about East Asia, three things uh, that happened in the last 25 years. Big thing is the stagnation of Japan, coming up of China, and uh, North Korean belligerency. Uh, Japan, if you compare GDP from 1994 and 2016, we have just grown 20%. It's 1.2 times. We were seven times larger than China at the time. Now, Ch China is three times larger than us. They have grown 23 times in that time. That's a huge difference, Japan and China's relations. And North Korea, recently, have, well, uh, have done uh, uh, dozens of missile tests uh, every year and already done six times uh, nuclear testing. And so North Korea issues a huge issue. So these three issues, uh, Japan's stagnation, China's rise, and North Korea is the biggest issue in East Asia. Japan's stagnation, Japan is trying to cope with that. And uh, Abe, the prime minister, has come up with uh, uh, financial policy, fiscal policy, and uh, structural policy. Financial policy and uh, fiscal policy has worked to some extent, but uh, structural reform is yet to take place. Uh, is now underway, if I may say. Uh, our uh, GDP growth is still stagnating, uh, less than 1%, uh, and uh, inflation rate is uh, also under 1%. And now, uh, the better part is uh, uh, unemployment is uh, lower than 4%, and stock price has risen two times in the last four years. So that's the better part. But uh, our economy is, uh, has to cope with two big issues. Uh, uh, one is uh, aging population, and the other is uh, discrepancy between big cities, big uh, companies, and smaller cities, uh, smaller companies. These two issues are huge issues that Japan has to cope with. So Japan is coming back from stagnation, but uh, uh, it's just not jumping out. It's sort of crawling out. That's uh, where we are. China. China is, uh, uh, as I said, it has come up, but now it's uh, not as uh, strong as before, the economy's economic growth. Uh, once it, uh, in 2007, it was 14% growth a year. Now it's 6.6%. Uh, and so uh, the problem there is that uh, although they are socialist country, uh, communist country, but s social safety net, uh, like... Uh, Social security and medical uh, system is not up to the standard of many of the developed countries. So if economy stagnates, it could bring about a very big social problem. And that's what the Chinese leadership knows well about and has to cope with it. So uh, one of the reasons that China uh, is uh, taking very strong attitude uh, towards anti-corruption issue is they have to get try to uh, cope with the frustration of the people towards they have to divert it from to from party to some of the individuals that's one thing the 
Second issue that China has, from our eyes, is uh, that uh, they, their policy towards uh, defense or military is the problematic part. Uh, in this uh, 25 years, Japan's military spending grew by 10%. We are only 1.1 times larger military spending than 25 years ago. U.S. 2.0 times. China, according to their announcement, 12 times. According to CIPRI of Sweden, 20, 20 times. So uh, uh, the military spending has grown so big. And the problem is not only military spending, but uh, the attitude, how it, it is implementing these uh, military spending. And uh, we've seen that example in South China Sea, military buildup in uh, many islands like Spratleys. And if I may say, we have an island issue with China. It's called Senkaku Island issue. Because we have, we're saying this is Japanese territory historically and legally, but in order not to arouse people around Japan, we have not allowed Japanese people to land on that island. We have not established port. We have not established even lighthouse there. But you've seen what's happening in South China Sea. So this attitude, militaristic attitude, is the problem that uh, many of us in Asia are concerned. But China is uh, very cautious towards the United States only, maybe. Uh, as we have seen uh, on Taiwan issue, when uh, Mr. Trump called uh, Ms. Tsai of tai Taiwan, uh, Chinese leadership accused Taiwan, not Mr. Trump. When th THAAD missile is going to be deployed, in South Korea, China blamed South Korea, but not United States that much. They expressed dissatisfaction. And when United States uh, attacked Syria with 57 cruise missiles, Russia uh, did not go along with uh, any other country and vetoed in United Nations, but China abstained. So China is trying to uh, I think, very hard to make good relations with this Trump administration. North Korea, uh, I think the leadership there thinks that uh, they need this military uh, weapon to, for, to secure the country and himself. They've se seen what happened to leaders around the con uh, world who didn't have these weapons. So I think uh, they will try to cling on to that. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, the word strategic patience that was used uh, sometime before, maybe not by Obama administration themselves, but uh, uh, to sketch Obama's uh, policy was uh, very misleading. Because uh, when you say that you're going to be patient, the other side will think, think that they could uh, push the envelope more. So uh, this is uh, uh, now uh, Mr. Trump's administration is saying everything on the table. This is a very uh, difficult or delicate word as well, because uh, uh, when Mr. Obama said, uh, if you use chemical weapon in Syria, you're going, we are going to pass the red line. And uh, if he didn't do anything, then uh, he was accused. So if you say everything on the table, you are uh, sort of setting some target as well. Now, so the best scenario is that the uh, U.S. is putting pressure on China, where China is trying to uh, meet uh, U.S. Uh, requests as much as possible. And uh, we have to see what kind of pressure China is uh, exerting on North Korea now. Uh, because 90% uh, of uh, trade of uh, North Korea is now with the uh, 
China. Uh, before, it, 20% was uh, South Korea, but uh, now uh, it's gone. So they're depending almost totally on China. And so China uh, have some, uh, uh, we expect uh, US or Japan expects China to exert a little bit more effort. Of course, there's a limit to that because no one wants to see collapse of uh, North Korea right away. Uh, so we have to be very careful, but uh, it can just go on like this as uh, business as usual, the uh, tests and all that. Uh, now, this is the uh, situation in China and North Korea, and I'll just touch up on U.S. and Russia. U.S., uh, during election campaign, uh, people ask me uh, how I look at uh, election, which candidate I support. And I, my, an my set answer was it's like a Christmas gift. You don't say anything till the day. You open the box, Christmas gift, and cry out, this is just what I wanted. That's the only solution, because you can't vote. And uh, I think uh, in that sense, uh, Japan did very well, because uh, Mr. Abe went to see Mr. Trump only seven days after the election. And then uh, what an amazing relation we developed uh, in this uh, six month, uh, 100 days. As I said, November, Abe went there. In February the 10th, Mr. Abe went there again in uh, Florida, was invited and played golf. Now, in February, Mr. Mattis, the uh, Secretary of Defense came. In March, Mr. Tillerson, the uh, Secretary of State came. April, Vice President Pence and Mr. Wilbur Ross, uh, the uh, Secretary of Commerce came. Never we've seen such relation developed in 100 days with any other organization, uh, administration. So Japan-US relations have developed so uh, close in this 100 days. This is completely uh, sort of uh, uh, unexpected in a way because uh, during election, Mr. Trump was saying that Japan is a free rider on security alliance with the United States. If US doesn't pay, uh, Japan doesn't pay all the fees, US may withdraw and Japan could go nuclear. Now, what happened? On February the 4th, Mattis came, Secretary of Defense, and he said Japan's spending of uh, home nation support, that is to United States, is the model for the rest of the world. And also, during the press conference, Mr. Trump said uh, on February the 10th, taking this opportunity, I'd like to thank Mr. Prime Minister and Japanese people, thank you for accepting U.S. forces on Japanese soil. I've never heard American president saying such thing, or American uh, Secretary of uh, Defense saying those things. So it's a 180 degrees change. Now, economy is not that easy. Uh, Mr. Because uh, uh, Americans hopped out of uh, uh, TPP, which uh, Americans have been pushing all the way <coughs> under Obama administration. Uh, Japan, I think, will uh, continue to support TPP and follow the TPP because we think it's good. And we hope one day maybe U.S. will come back. But uh, during this time, U.S. wants some uh, bilateral uh, discussion uh, framework, so we'll be continuing to discuss with the United States on bilateral framework. And But Japan's policy on uh, uh, multilateral trade, WTO, and uh, free trade area, and those uh, uh, philosophy will not change. Russia, uh, we don't accept, uh, of course, uh, a Russian attitude t towards Crimea or Ukraine, and uh, we are uh, joining European countries and the United States on sanctions. 
However, at the same time, Russia is the only country we have not negotiated peace treaty after World War II because of the existence of uh, Northern Territory, which is occupied by <coughs> Russia since the end of the World War II. All other islands have been returned, including Okinawa by United States, but uh, these Northern Territories, so we have to negotiate. And uh, this is possible only for, when four conditions are met. When Russia really wants to negotiate, because uh, uh, it, Russia can negotiate, it's a strong leader. When Japan has a strong leader, because when they think Japan doesn't have a strong leader, they'll think they can wait. And third, the relations between the two leaders are very good. Or well, Abe and Putin uh, is developing friendship. So uh, this is uh, the very rare occasion that uh, we can see some uh, uh, advances. And they met in February, and they just recently met in April. And uh, now Japan and Russia have agreed to send a uh, government and private uh, mission to uh, Northern Territories in order to jointly develop the Northern, to start uh, joint development of Northern Territories. This is, we hope this will be the step towards the return of these islands. This is the uh, strategy. And uh, we'll have to wait and see how it will develop. But this is our policy towards Russia. So I've just uh, sort of skimmed over our relation, Japan's situation, economic policy, uh, our, how we see, see China, how we see North Korea, United States, and Russia, uh, China. But uh, all these uh, are not a formal government uh, uh, views. Uh, if it's a formal government view, Ambassador Miyoshi or Ms. Itakura can uh, say, but uh, this is my uh, personal view, which is uh, not 180 degrees different from government, but uh, a little bit more nuanced and, uh, if I may say, a little bit more honest than uh, government officials' view. Thank you very much.